Let's take a look at some concepts related to frequency and frequency distributions. We'll start with this problem where we have a given data set. These, is, these are all ages of lottery winners. And fortunately, they're in order for us, which helps us out. We want to know the frequency in each age class or age group. And we can quickly add those up. We have three in the 20s. And then let's see, three plus another three is six in the 30s and so forth. So we're just counting how many are in each group. If you want to, you can uh, copy and paste these into Staplet, one quantitative variable single group. And for a large data set or a data set where things are out of order, scrambled up, this can be helpful because for one thing, the dot plot will put them in order regardless of how you started out. So then you can count these up maybe a little quicker or even better, if you go to histogram, it creates the bar graph that would go with the frequency distribution table. And so the heights of these will be your frequencies. We, we do sometimes have to adjust if these numbers on the bottom don't match. Here it's um, 20 to 29 is going to go like, look like it goes right up to 30. But if you look at the inequality, it's less than 30. So it's going 20 to 29. There's three people there. 30 to 39 is six and so on. We will do more with this later specifically adjusting these values when it doesn't match. The next kind of problem you can have is with relative frequency, something like this. What you need to do is find the percent um, frequency out of the total. I really like to do this in Google Sheets, and I think it's a good opportunity to show you a couple quick features. So highlight all these words. Try not to go past the bottom. That way we're just getting the table. Copy that. Go to a blank Google Sheets and paste it there. It has a bunch of formatting with it. Um, we don't need that. It doesn't make too big a difference, but if you want to highlight that whole sheet, you can click in that top left box by A and 1, or you can highlight columns. You just got to make sure that you're careful not to accidentally move a column, which, which can happen like that. So always kind of be slow and look at what you're doing and make sure you're not moving things around. So I'm going to highlight from C to A and go to Format, way down at the bottom, Clear Formatting. And that will take away the colors and the font. Here I can get rid of these percent signs, just highlighting and hitting Backspace. Now I have the basic framework of my table. And what I want to do is find the total number of students. If you highlight those cells, you get a sum down here. So we could just type that in below. Or I want to show you another feature when you highlight them. If you can see all your menu options, look way, way down to the right. And if you if you have this more, click that and way down on the right, you're going to have a functions button. That is a Greek capital sigma, like a capital S, and it means sum, but it's all the functions that you can do. And there's a whole lot of them. We want some. That's the going to be the most common. And it puts in the special uh, coded formula for us. It's really easy to do. You just start with an equal sign. That tells uh, Google Sheets or Excel that that's a formula. We have the sum function and the input is the data range, or you could have a list of values or you could have a range of cells. This is telling it we're going from B2 on top down to B7. You can, you can do a rectangular box, a vertical box, a horizontal box, or a rectangular box using uh, the from top left to bottom right style there. So that's a total of 29. Now for the relative frequency, let's do that one ourselves. We're going to do equals, and it's going to say, hey, how about this? What if we do B2 divided by B8? That's going to be 0 0.103. Is that what you want? That is exactly what we want. We want to take the three students, divide it by the total to see at first a decimal, then we'll get a percent. Now I could do that again and again. And if I do an equals, it will give me that same type of suggestion. Notice how we're moving from B2 to B3 here, but we're staying at B8 down there. Now here's another tr trick that I really love, and that is the fill. If you just click once on that last one and then put your cursor over the bottom right corner where there's that dot, you'll see the mouse pointer go into a plus sign. Click and hold and drag. 
and drag it down so you're next to the last frequency and look at this suggestion there are some errors there and I'll explain why in a second but the suggestion is going to fix it and now let's see what it did b3 divided by dollar sign b dollar sign 8 b4 divided by dollar sign b dollar sign 8 let's look at what would happen if I didn't take that suggestion so this is what we had in the top one, B2 over B8. Now let me fill that down, not take the suggestion, and see what happens. So B2 over B8, B3 over B9, so it moved the orange box, which we do want, but then it moved the purple dot box, which we didn't want. So it's going to keep moving both of those, and it's dividing by zero because there's nothing in these cells down here. So what the suggestion did is it put the dollar sign in front of both the column and the row, number and letters. Specifically, the one we need is we need that dollar sign 8. That locks you in at 8, so when you fill, you don't move. The B3 is going to continue to go down, B4, B5, B6. So like I said, you could do this with just the 8 dollar sign. That's going to be exactly the same. Um, the dollar sign in front of the B would be more for a left-right fill. It would lock you into that column. So that's a just a little bit of a um, few tips that we will use here and there. When we get to the project, I'll definitely have a video that goes through those steps. The last thing you might want to do is format these as percentages. Highlight those numbers or even the whole column. Hit that percent sign, format as percent, and move your decimal place however you need to. To answer that question. The last kind of problem we have is cumulative frequency and I'm just going to continue using this uh, example and you'll do this on a different problem but cumulative frequency is the accumulation. We start at 3, we add in another 7. Oops, I'm just going to do that in my head. 3 plus 7 is 10, add in another 4 is 14, Add in another 3 is 17, another 3 is 20, another 9 is 29. And so we accumulate up to the total with cumulative frequency.